Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Down to Earth Astronomy and Elite Dangerous. This is the third video in my advanced miners guide. Um, in the first video we talked about how you fit your ship, what modules you need. In the second video we talked about where to mine, how do you find that perfect system, the different suggestions or the different um, um, things you need to take in mind when you select where you need to drop down in the ring and if you should mine rest sites. Um, so if you haven't watched those already, I suggest you go back, find those videos on my channel and uh, watch them. And in this video, we're going to talk about some of all the smaller tips and tricks that's going to make your life as a miner a whole lot easier and a whole lot more uh, comfortable, but will also increase your yield and your effectiveness once you're out there in the rings and mining. Now, we are here in a belt, as you can see. And the first thing I want to talk about is how do you select the different rocks? What rocks do you prospect? I mean, there's a, as you can see, there's a lot of rocks. And how do you select the ones that you want to, uh, to prospect? Now, an important point here is to note that all rocks are created equal, at least within the same ring. So every single rock in the ring are created equal. That means they all have the same chance to have the different types of material. And they also all have the same... Um, number of a chance to have the same number of fragments so that doesn't change for the rocks and actually you can see that if you go into a rest site as i talked about in the last video that these rocks are static if you if you log out um, and log back in and go back to the same rock as you were before you will often see that it's changed shape so the model of the rock have changed um, but the content of the rock will be the same but we'll get back to that um, at the end of the video but for now um how do you select a good rock to mine? Now, because all rocks are created equal, it doesn't really matter which rocks you go for. So the only thing you should consider is the shape of the rock, but also um, how fast it's spinning. Because if we go up to, uh, let's see if we can find this one over here. See, this is a very uh, elongated rock, the one in front of me. And if I were to move up very close, or if I were to move up to this rock, and let's just find a quick prospector at it, and I were to mine at this, because it's elongated, when I'm mining at the flat side, the fragments will come out closer to the center of the rock, and they will then often be bumped by the rock as it spins, and often, oh, that's not a bad rock, actually, um, and often this will then kill your limpets. For instance, if I mine on this rock here, I'll begin to put out fragments, and as you can see here, oh, as the rock turns around, the uh, end of the rock is going to hit my fragments. And of course, I haven't put my pins right, but you get the idea. You see the fragments there, probably being hit by it in a bit. There you go. And also, if you're not paying attention, you can see how close this got to my ship. You can actually be hit by the rock itself. So this is going to cost you um, quite a significant amount of, of, of limpets if you don't uh, take this into consideration. Um, so my suggestion is you use the, the small, round um, rock that spins as little as possible. Of course, if you found, like this one, a decent rock, nice amount of osmium, um, this is not going to be an actual mining trip, so I'm just going to um, leave the fragments here for now. What you can do is you can go out here to the side and mine at the rock's center of rotation. This was actually the main method you would mine back in the day before... Um, before you had limpets to collect them, you have to scoop them up yourself. You would mine at the center of rotation to make all the fragments go out in the same uh, direction, which make them easier to scoop for you. And we can still use this to our advantage. Um, so let's get in a little bit closer to this rock here. You see, if, if I'm mining here at the center of rotation, you can see even though the rock is rotating, my lasers are still hitting the same point on the rock. That means, of course, that the rock is not going to change distance from me, and though my limpets will be uh, will be safe. So I just launched uh, a few collectors here. Oh, that was chaff. That was not meant. To... There we go. So now I have all my um, my collectors out, and they can begin to uh, to collect the fragments. So that's a good um, that's a good thing to keep in mind. Um, another thing is when. Once you launch your 
uh, your collectors. It's very, very, very important. I actually have uh, had a guy that wrote to, wrote to me about this. I need to drop my cargo hatch. There we go. There we go. So I had a guy write to me about this, that he had a problem where he lim his limpets would die after only collecting a single fragment, and he couldn't understand why they did it. And I didn't know this at the time, but what we figured out was that you'll, if you target a fragment, your limpets will only collect that single fragment and then destroy itself. So what you, sh what you should really be careful of is do not uh, target your fragments while you launch your collectors. Because otherwise they will only collect a single fragment and then die. That's another good thing to, uh, to keep in mind. Now, now that we are here at the rock and we are mining, another thing you can do um, is if you look at this rock, the approximate center of mass, the approximate center of the rock is round about here, I would say, where I'm pointing my lasers now. And what you saw that I did was I moved down a little bit, so actually mining a little bit below the center um, of the rock from where I am, from, from, from my point of view, I'm mining below the center of the rock. And I do that because you can see here on the radar, once the fragments come, now this is of course depleted, so this is a bad example, let's just go over to this rock instead. What it will do is it will send the fragments out below your ship. That means that the fragments, because they will, as, as I understand, it looks like that the fragments are exiting the rock um, directly away from the center of the rock. So if you imagine the rock as a, uh, as a circle or a ball, you could draw a line from the center of the circle and out to the edge. And that's, and, uh, and that's the direction that the fragments will exit in. Now, this is a very bad angle to be mining at, but if I go down, mine a little bit below the center of mass, you can see the fragments are coming out here below my ship, which makes it easier for my, uh, for my collectors to actually collect the fragments and bring them back to, uh, to my ship, and then they have a shorter distance to fly. And of course, the closer you can go to the rock, um, again, the shorter the distance is. Um, but again, that depends on how fast the rug is spinning and how bulky it is uh, looking. So let's uh, let's move on. Another neat trick is you can see here I have the planet targeted. Um, so I will always have my planet down here at my um, at my what's the name compass here next to my my radar. So once I'm done prospecting uh, a rock or mining at a certain rock. I will always move towards the planet, uh, or at least, or away from it, that depends on uh, on what you like. I like to move uh, towards the planet and then have the sun behind me, as I talked about with the, in the Where to Mine video, that need to drop out so you, have, so you are uh, directly in between the planet and the sun, so the sun will be directly behind me, um, and the planet will be directly in front of me like it is here. That means that the sun, or the star at the system, is, uh, is illuminating all the rocks, and, um, and it makes it very easy for me to spot the rocks. Um, and also, you, you often, if the planet has uh, is colored, you will have a nice colored background instead of the dark background, which makes the rocks harder to uh, to identify. Um, and also, it makes sure that you do not run in circles. If you just target random rocks, what will often happen is you would end up flying around in the same area and you will come back to the same rocks over and over and over again. So to prevent that, you can just um, keep moving towards the planet, um, and then you will ensure that you will not be running in circles. Now, I didn't talk about this in the fittings video, even though I probably should have. Actually, let's prospect this one. This looks good. See, this is a good rock. It's small, it's very round, and it's not spinning at all. So this is a very easy rock to mine. So let's try and prospect that. Now, what I didn't talk about in the fittings video, which I probably should have, is the, the, the prospectors here, the higher rating they have, the more fragments you will get from the rock. So a rock will have uh, a certain number of fragments if it's not prospected. And when you and as soon as the prospector hit, that number of fragments you will get from the, from the rock will increase. And they will increase based on the rating. So if it's an A-rated um, controller, uh, prospector controller, you will get more fragments. Um, so again, very, uh, very neat trick. So it actually does, um, I think, pays fairly well to fit an A-rated um, Controller, uh, prospector controller. What do we have here? Silver, not a very good rock. Just keep on going. Um, 
So that's a neat trick you can use uh, to get a little bit more out of uh, your rocks once you find them. And of course, also mean that it's more viable to just skip the the, the cheap rocks and just go for the, the ones that really uh, pay very, very well. Um, now let's see what I have in my cargo hold right now. Because the next trick here... What is this rock? Nah. No mind. So let's say I have a little bit of uh, I have a little bit of silver, and let's say that I uh, my cargo hold is full, and I've by by accident or mm, I just mined a lot, or let's say in died some material that I don't really want. Um, and I want to get rid of it, but the problem is if I go here and I jettison this, you can see here what will happen is my collectors will say, oh, that's a fragment, you can see it down there on the radar. And they will most likely go out and try and collect it. No, they will not. But they fixed that. Oh, that's neat. I didn't know that. Oh, that's cool. Because back in a previous pad last time I was about mining, when you launch fragments from your cargo hold, they, the collectors will go out and collect it, but they do not anymore. And that's actually very, very cool. Because back what you have to do back then, was you would have to use your downward thrust as you jettisoned it, meaning that your ship would bump down and actually destroy the fragments, preventing the, the collectors from actually getting to it. But now that they've fixed this, that the collectors don't collect jettisoned items, that's actually pretty cool. Okay, so um, nice thing to know that uh, collectors do no longer um, collect jettisoned um, fragments. Oh, two small rocks up here, let's try and prospect those. Not a very efficient mining trip this is. Anyway, um, another trick you can use if you for some reason or another want to get rid of some of your collectors. Let's try to go up and do it on this rock. Um, because your collectors will always be hovering just below your ship, you can actually scrape across, you can scrape the bottom of your ship across a, um, across a rock and that will destroy your limpets. Um, I sometimes used used it as, as in the past um, before I figure out the downward thrust with the which would destroy the fragments. If I want to get away away from some um, uh, get away from some fragments that I've jettisoned, see so yeah, I can scrape across it and come on. And there we go, and the collectors are dead. They were all destroyed against the rock. That's an easy way to get rid of your rocks, and especially if you have a shield, it doesn't really hurt your shield at all. Um, and I think that's um, some of the small tricks you can use once you're out here in uh, in the actual belt. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about what you can do when you go into a rest site. Now, there's been a lot of... Uh, um, of forum activities on the rest site lately because people have discovered that firstly as I said the rest sites are static meaning that the rocks will always stay the same within the rest site their uh, physical model in the game so the way that rock looks will change from session to session but the content of the rock will stay the same and the rock will refill I think it's every second hour so you can come back you can ooh, 43% palladium. Let's mine that. So you can come back to the rock two hours later and you can mine the same thing. But what I, what a friend of mine told me, um, and he, he does a lot of this, trying to figure out how to optimize mining. Um, firstly, if you mine in a gang or a wing, you will get a, a bonus to the number of fragments you will get. And of course, you will also get a bonus to the number of fragments if you go into a rest site. And the more difficult the rest site, the more fragments you will get. And the rest site expands out to 20 kilometers away from the um, from the actual uh, beacon. Um, but another thing you can do, and this is actually a very weird thing, I do believe it's a bug. But it seems that if you drop out 50 kilometers from a rest site, so with outside the actual rest site, you have a fighter on board and you then launch the fighter and ask the fighter to hold position. So the fighter will stay out at this uh, at these 50 kilometers. Then you fly your ship in towards the rest site. And once you hit in between the 20 and 15 kilometer mark where you ideally should be mining, 
to avoid most of um, most of the pirates in that will be in the rest site. So if you mind, they are the outskirts. And you are within 20 kilometers, and you have your fighter on hold 50 kilometers out. You will, for some odd reason, get more fragments. And I don't know why this happens. I don't know if it's a bug in the game. It probably is. But you will get more fragments. So, but of course, this will also mean that you do not have your fragments for your sorry your fighters for protection in case. Um, someone gets out and actually engages you. So you'll have to rely either on the defense and the weapons of your ship or the local police that will most likely also be in the rest site. But if you're mining in a hazardous or high uh, resource extraction site, it can be difficult. So that's the thing to, to keep in mind. But if mining in a wing, and I think you can drop out yeah, at, uh, at 50 kilometers, drop the flight, fighter, ask it to stay where it is, and then move... Um, move in and mine, you will actually get an increased amount of fragments. And I have seen him getting more than a hundred fragments per rock. When I'm mining here, just dropping down in the random location, um, I normally get round about between 30 and 40 fragments with decent uh, prospector. But getting a hundred fragments per rock, that means you can only go for really the most valuable rocks and it will still make a very good profit, even though you maybe only uh, mine a few uh, fragments each time which of course also makes it more variable to, to do this in a cheap ship because you don't need that much cargo hold um, and then of course once you're done with all your mining your cargo hold is nice and full of all the, the valuable materials that you need um, you go back to your station and make sure to check the mission board because the mission board um, will often or in some cases they will have uh, missions for delivering uh, different materials. And for instance, osmium is very popular in this uh, area I'm in. And sometimes the mission will pay around about 80,000 credits per unit of osmium, which is frankly insane. Um, and also when actually selling your materials, it can be a very good idea to go into your favorite uh, Elite Dangerous information site. That could be uh, EDDB or whatever site you like to use. Look up the prices on the materials at the local stations in the nearby systems because sometimes you will have stations buying, for instance, Paynite. I've seen uh, stations buy that at 75,000 credits, whereas some stations maybe will only buy it at 40 or 38,000. So you could actually get an, I think, 80% increase in the price for some of your materials just by moving a few jumps, which is actually, which is definitely worth your time just going those few extra jumps to get. Um, to get that almost double payment. So make sure, check the database, see where the prices are good, check the mission board at all the stations you're docking at um, before you sell your materials because you might be able to get a bit of price and a little bit of standing with the local local factions if you use, um, use the mission board. So I think uh, that was about it. If you have any tips and tricks that you think I missed, remember to, uh, to post them down in the comments down below. Um, if you found anything uh, that I said here useful, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, I will see you guys in space.